Hey everybody, this is Joseph 3D Sorcerer. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing y'all how to make this sign in Fusion 360. Uh, the physical version of it is right here. You can see it turns out pretty much like the render. You see there's two colors and I'll show you how to make that color change as well in Bruce's Slicer. And you know, I see a lot of people that make signs like this. And you might've made one like this yourself. It's pretty easy to do. You just use the text function and then kind of extrude the letters. But I think you can really improve your design pretty easily and I'll show you how to do that. This is another one that we'll make with the bolts at each of the four corners. So I uh, hope that y'all get something out of this. And if you do, please uh, hit the like and subscribe button. Love for y'all to keep up with me and leave your comments down below. Be happy to answer any questions you have. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so here we are in Fusion 360. I'm gonna go ahead and save this design as sign and then create a new component, which should always be your first step when you're working in CAD. And then I'm going to start with a sketch and we're gonna use the origin and we're gonna sketch on the front plane here. So the first big tip I have for making, especially rectangular signs, is to use this center rectangle. That just makes everything a lot easier. You can use symmetry, you can mirror things. So just kind of draw just a generic one. And I'm also gonna draw another smaller rectangle there. And I'm actually gonna make this into construction rectangle. So you've already drawn it you can first click escape to get it off of the rectangle drawing tool. And now we're gonna select the line and click X. And that just changes it to a construction line. You can see how it's dashed. And that way it doesn't try to actually extrude this. So if you'll notice it selects the whole thing. This is really just for measuring things with. So now we're gonna go back in and select text. And now we can actually use that construction line to draw our text across, our text box essentially. And the reason I did this is because this text box thing does not really work how you think it would. So I feel like this is just a lot easier to understand. So now I'm just gonna put, go ahead and write out whatever text you wanna use. I'm going with subscribe. So you should subscribe, obviously. And right now you can see that I don't have anything constrained and there's a reason for that. I wanna make everything symmetric around this text. And if I went ahead and constrained it, it'd be a little bit more difficult to do. So let's just go ahead and focus on the text right now. We have our text there, so add an exclamation mark just for fun. And this is kind of the default settings. I'm gonna leave it on Arial. One thing I do recommend is to make it bold just so that the printer can print it a little bit easier. And then as far as the height goes, I think anything over like five I've used before, but I wouldn't really go much lower than five unless you're printing with a resin printer, which we're not in this case. So I'm gonna stick with 10, but you can try. You know, anything larger than 10 would definitely work, but I wouldn't go very much lower than five. Character spacing, uh, that's important for some of the fonts where the characters get pretty close. You can see here, this is relatively close. And if you increase the character spacing to like 10, you'll notice that they get further apart. So I recommend increasing it. That way, if you think about the printer trying to print these, it, it has trouble when things are really close together. So that gives it a little more room to make sure it's doing uh, what you want it to do. And then as far as flip, that just basically flips the text. I would leave that alone. And then I definitely want to align center and align middle. So now we have it all nice and centered. And as you can see, we're centered around the center point of the origin of the sketch. So I'm happy with this sketch. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that it's not constrained yet. So if you remember, we made that first rectangle here around the center rectangle, but this is the, the text rectangle. So to constrain this, we're going to go ahead and add a coincident constraint. So click coincident, click here and then click on this other rectangle. So now everything is constrained and they're basically the same rectangle now. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make this rectangle the same size as our text. So that's why I didn't constrain everything. We already know that the height is 10 based on what we pulled it in the actual text menu earlier. But as far as the width, I've tried different things and you can't constrain this to any point over here. So what I do, which is kind of a bootleg way of doing things, but I, it's worked for me, is I essentially just guess. So you can see 100 is too far outside. You can try 90, see that's pretty close. We try 95, 
it's a little further away so maybe in between that 92.5 so that looks pretty good to me as far as being pretty close to both sides and that way now uh, we have something to draw things off of so the reason i did that is because i want this border to be symmetric so now i'm going to go ahead and constrain this outside rectangle so i'm going to use d which is the hot key for distance and I've been using that but haven't mentioned it until this point but d and then I'm gonna make it 20 millimeters. And then another tip I wanna to mention to y'all is if you do another dimension here, and instead of entering 20 into this, if you just click on 20, now it's gonna reference this number, okay? And what's neat about that is now if we change it to 10, that automatically updates to 10. So it's basically a variable where it's just referencing this number over here, and that really speeds things up when you have stuff that's the same distance. And you can obviously make a parameter, but this is a little more simplistic for kind of basic designs like this. All right, so now we have our original sketch done. Go ahead and finish that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and name this sketch just text it's just good practice so you can go back and reference that easy all right so now we're gonna do some extruding so you can click e or click extrude up here and i usually make mine about five millimeters deep and the reason for that is generally speaking if you're using a magnet to mount this somewhere which is what i'm gonna do i'll show you how to do that at the end or if you're using screws you can make a little offset i'll also show you how to do that and think that five is just a good number you can obviously use different values if you want to. So now we have our rectangle essentially. I'm going to turn this text sketch back on. All right, so now we want to extrude the text. Come up here and click extrude or click E. For some reason, it selected that automatically. So I'm just going to unselect that. And now we just want to select the actual text itself. So just click on that. And for whatever reason, a lot of people think that, you know, it's cool to extrude it out, which I understand that to some degree, but I just think that cutting away looks a lot better. And the reason for that primarily is because then you can use texture of the print bed as your faceplate and to me that looks a lot better it doesn't really even look 3d printed if you have a prusa that's how they print the lcd screen mount you'll notice it has the nice texture finish and especially if you have a texture bed it just looks a lot better when you cut away so what i usually do is i cut into the body and i usually do twice my layer height so if my layer height is 0.2 i just do two layers so that'll be 0.4 and you need to do negative depending on what direction you're extruding so negative 0.4 click OK and you'll notice that you can't really see anything and that's because our sketch is covering it up so if you just turn this sketch off now you see that we extruded subscribe into this body so we're headed in the right direction you know this is a good place to be uh, right now I think is a good time to just show you all how to color this so if you click a it'll bring up your appearances tab which is this here another way to get to that is to click modify go to appearance but I would highly recommend and learning your shortcuts so click a and then what i always use is just abs which is fine for you know appearance purposes it's a type of plastic and these are some of my colors but uh, if you go down to fusion 360 library you should have access to the abs white so just go ahead and drag that over now we have it colored white and then you can right click on this and duplicate and now we have a duplicate of the white and we're going to click edit and then we can make this let's make it blue for instance and then we'll just drag selector to a color that we like click done and now we have blue and as far as coloring this if you just drag the blue on here it colors the whole thing but we just want to color the individual faces so you have to select faces and i'm actually going to color the faces white so go ahead and just select each face you can drag each individual but i have better success just selecting them like this sometimes it's a little tedious and to be able to do this you need to hold command or control as you're selecting so that you can select multiple now we drag the white on top of there make sure it's selected and now you see we have our different color all right so this is a sign obviously but uh, I think we can do a little bit better than that so our next step is to add some kind of finishing touches to it and what we're going to do first is we're going to add a fillet to each of the corners shortcut for that is just F and that just rounds off the corners. I uh, use 10 a lot just because it's easy to remember and usually looks pretty good. So there, 
I think that looks a lot better already. Just in general, if it's in the XY plane, the printer does better with curves. So if you can add curves instead of a 90 degree angle, usually that prints off better. The next step that I wanna do here is actually add another sketch. So create sketch, we can just do that on the surface. And then we're gonna do an offset. And what I'm doing here is I'm gonna add a nice little border around the print. And for this situation, I'm gonna do negative six millimeters off. And then we're gonna add another offset, select the perimeter again, and then drag down negative nine millimeters. Okay, finish sketch. We can just make this border. And now we're going to extrude the border out. So click E or extrude. And now we just want to extrude it the same distance that we extruded our original text. So if you want to select the face, you click and hold, and that gives you the profile, which is on top, and then the face, which is what we want. So you can see how it changes. And again, the way I got to that is you just hover over the selection you want and click and hold. This is a nice shortcut that helps you fine tune your selection. I lost my extrusion, so I'm gonna go back, click and hold, face, and now you'll see it's extruding negative 0.4, which is what we want. All right, and now see that we gotta change our face again. So click A for appearances, and then we can select our white, make sure faces are selected there. And now we have our border colored. And I just think that just adds another nice little detail. And it's, it's easy to do, it's literally one sketch. The offsets are really nice commands, so just remember that. And now the last thing I like to do is add a chamfer around the edge. Make sure you select that edge. Let's make it three millimeters. So now we have a pretty nice looking sign. We added some nice little features at the end, which really make it look a little more professional than some of the other ways you could do it. And now I think for me, I'm gonna make it magnetic on the back. So I'm gonna add some press fit magnets back here. So just add another sketch. You could actually go back and add these details in a different sketch, but I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a line down the midline. Select the line and click X and you see it becomes dotted again. And now shortcut for circle is C. You can also go here, select circle, center diameter circle. And the di diameter of this magnet is six millimeters. I'm not gonna add any tolerance because I can press fit this in pretty easily. And now we're just gonna make sure that the location of this is not directly under the border. So I'd like it to be ideally somewhere in here. So I think maybe 15 would work. Yeah, so 15 is a good spot for it. And they're gonna use that same trick again. Uh, dimension or D is a shortcut, select that. I'll select that point. And now we're gonna go here and select that. And I'll click enter. Now that's 15 as well. You can also mirror this. That's another way to do it. Sometimes I mirror, sometimes I just go ahead and draw it. And so now we're gonna extrude the depth of the magnet, which is three millimeters, negative three. So now we have a nice little place to put some magnets. So this will be easy to attach to anything. This is an easy way to make some refrigerator magnets. You can you know, obviously attach it to anything metal. All right, so now I have a pretty nice sign with the uh, magnet holes to hold it on anything metallic. So. What I wanna do now is just show y'all how I would make the same sign with holes at each of the four corners. This is pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this sign. And now we can go in and rename it. Sign with corner holes. Make sure that we switch over. All right, so now we have our copied over sign. Uh, this is the sign with corner holes that we just made. See, it still has the magnet holes at the back. And now make sure that you actually select the component. I just did a full video without selecting the right component. So I have to go back and fix that. So just go back in your timeline to before we made that border because I don't think the border really works for the whole design. And then this is the sketch for the border. So go in front of that. Now, if you right click here, you can click delete and then just delete all of these behind it. So now we're pretty much at the basic sign. Now we're gonna add some holes on the corners. So we're gonna make a new sketch on the face. You can click C or create circle center diameter. And then you should be able 
to find the center point here of that radius. So that gives us some nice concentric circles. So what I did is I just made a circle and then I coincident constrained it. And we're actually gonna make two circles. So now that we have the first one constrained, we can just hit C again, select the center point and then draw a bigger circle. And what this is, is this circle is gonna be the size of the head of the bolt or screw plus about 0.4. So if the head was 10 millimeters, we're gonna make it 10.4. And then this is the through hole. So if the thread diameter of your screw is five millimeters, make it 5.4. All right, so now we have our two holes, finish that sketch. And now we're just gonna extrude this through hole all the way through everything. So just make it point in the right direction. And then we do extent all. So now it cuts through anything in its way. Click okay. Now we have our through hole. Go ahead and get this out of the way for us. And now we bring the sketch back up. Forgot to name it, I'll just name it holes. Turn it back on, make it visible. Now we're gonna extrude this almost all the way through. Not quite all the way through, but almost. So the right way to do that, you can do it a lot of different ways. You could do the math in your head and say, you can do negative four, uh, and that would leave us you know, one millimeter. Or the technical way to do that would be to do uh, distance. Instead of distance, change it to object select the back and you see that does the same thing right but then you go here and click offset and make this offset of negative one and so you'll see here now we have a negative one thickness there and as long as you have about a millimeter uh, generally speaking that's fine i mean this is just a sign it's not anything heavy so it should hold up relatively well and the reason you want to do that offset technique is if you change the thickness of this so for instance if we made this Instead of five millimeters, let's make it you know, 10. So it's a really thick sign now. Now, if we did it right, this is still one millimeter. So that updates uh, correctly. Whereas if we did it the other way, it wouldn't have done that. It would have still been five millimeters. So I'm gonna go back to a full thickness of five and then it should update. And we still have that one millimeter thick backing there. So now uh, we need three more holes. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to do a mirror. And the reason I can do that is we did a center rectangle at the beginning. So that's why I mentioned it was pretty useful because now we have everything you know, centered around this. So we can mirror it across. That's what I'll do now. The object is a feature because we made these holes. Select both of these features. And you might have to hold command to select both of those. And then the mirror plane is this plane here. You see the preview, that's where we want it. Click OK. And now we have two holes. And then if we want to make another hole, we'll just go and do the mirror command again. It's already on features. It remembers that from last time. And our objects are all three of those features because we want to mirror this hole down. And we also want to mirror the mirrored hole. And now we're just going to select this plane. So now you see the preview, click OK. And now we have our four holes. And I think now this looks pretty good. We can turn the origin off, have a nice look at it. I would still add the chamfer just because I like it. Three looks, looks pretty good. You can play around with it. I might do a little less on this one, maybe two. And uh, there it is. So that's how I would make the same sign with four holes on it. But there are some ways to make a hidden mount so you could make a type of cleat design back here and if you are interested in that just comment it down in the comment section below because I can do a quick video on that as well but this is a pretty nice design uh, pretty straightforward and like I said it has a lot of symmetry which I really like and uh, I think it's pretty clean it's a pretty short timeline and we added some features that were pretty easy to do, but I think it really makes the sign look a lot better. So now I'm going to export this over to Fusion 360. So I'm gonna go to File, 3D Print, select it. I already have Prusa Slicer as my default, but if you don't, you might just wanna export the STL and then load it into Prusa Slicer. So now we jump into Prusa Slicer here. All right, so I went ahead and exported everything into Prusa Slicer. I did both versions that we just designed. And first thing is to put it face down. Uh, as I mentioned, that's how I'll print these off. And I have the textured bed plate uh, on the Prusa Mark 3S. And you can see here, 
that there is this big overhang and some people might be inclined to add supports to this model but i actually don't add supports because you don't see this anyway so even if it doesn't print perfectly it's really not noticeable because the uh, head of the screw or bolt is going to be taking up all this space anyway so i don't really worry about it uh, one thing i do add is a filament change so if you go ahead and slice the file you can see my settings are the default on the quality setting 0.2 millimeters and what i do is go ahead and change the filament out at 0.6 so this stops at the beginning of the 0.6 layer and if you'll think back we did a 0.4 millimeter cutout so you can see this is the last layer of the cutout and then when you go up to 0.6 the color changes so all of this does is pause the printer and then it starts beeping and then you can change out your filament to the other color and then if you just go ahead and uh, put this all the way down you see the orange and then the green are the two different filaments so that's all you have to do to get the two colors on your sign and i think that this should turn out pretty well so now i'm going to send it over to the printer and uh, show you all what happens all right so you can see there's three hours left on the print i'm doing both of the models the one with the holes in each of the four corners and then the one with the magnets and it'll show you here in a second that there's 25 minutes until the color change so good way to time everything up it's pretty convenient. So I'll, I'll show you I want to change the colors. All right, so now it's beeping, obviously, and time to change the filament out. So I'll switch it out real quick. Just click the knob. It ejects the filament. And then you get the other roll. Let's see. Stick it in there. So yes sure that it's extruding make sure the color changes usually it does on the first try as long as it catches pretty easy Should color change correct yes then always try to catch this just so it gets a nice clean transition now it's going to go down and start on a different color So you can see the white running away. So I'll show you all how it looks at the end. All right, so full disclaimer, this was the results of the first print. It looks okay, but you can see the layer lines there and it's not really the effect I'm going for. So the issue, I believe was I had a lot of glue on this texture plate which filled in the texture so it didn't really get that effect that I was looking for. So I cleaned off the plate now I'm going to recalibrate this Z offset and I think now we'll get a better result. So I'll show all that here in a second. All right, so now we'll check out this. So it looks pretty good. Uh, if you don't get really close, you can't even tell it's 3D printed really. And, uh, and our printer's not perfectly calibrated, but that's a lot better than it was. And you get that nice textured finish on it. The holes, as I mentioned, do have some kind of artifacts in it, but I'll show you in a second. Once you clean those up, it's really not a big issue. So big improvement from the last time. And I think that probably most people agree that this looks better than the other version. So I'll show you all that now. All right, so as promised, this is the first version I did. Not really sure if you can tell. Mm, I don't think it's going to focus. There you go. You can kind of see the layer lines there. And then compare that to this version. This is the same build plate. I just, like I said, lowered the Z offset and get a little squish on that texture. You can't really see the layer lines. So it's a pretty good comparison. And right there, you can kind of see, if you look at the letters, the difference in the quality of the print. Kind of the same thing for this set as well. You can see that S looks really good, and this S does not look so good. So really, it's just a Z offset issue, but just wanted to be transparent and show you all that I actually did screw up the first time. So it doesn't work the first time. I might try that out and see if it helps. So I want to share all that. All right, so I just thought I was recording this, but I put the magnets in the holes that I added on the back of this sign. 
Now we can go and attach it to something metal, this filing cabinet, and there you go. All right, so we're gonna hop back into Fusion 360. I'm gonna show y'all how to edit the text on the sign so that you can put whatever you want on it and the files are down in the description. If you wanna edit this, just go over to the text uh, sketch, click edit sketch, and then you wanna double click on the text itself and then you just change this to whatever you want. Or something like that. You can adjust the size down to something a little smaller. There we go. And if you wanted to adjust the width of it, you could do that. Click A to change the appearance. You want to select the faces here. And one thing, if you zoom in further, sometimes it's easy to select them. So now I'm just going to select all these that didn't get colored the right color. Zoom in. Make sure faces is selected and then drag that over. All right, there we go. So really appreciate y'all watching. Uh, if y'all want to support the channel, really appreciate a like and a subscribe. That really helps us a lot. Just want to grow the channel and hopefully help some other people with CAD and Fusion 360 in particular. So appreciate y'all watching and uh, see you in the next one.